Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. On day two, I tested it, and I found that the mobile phone interface worked, but it wasn't quite as snappy as I would have liked, so I decided I actually needed button control. To be honest, the mobile phone interface was only really done as a quick and dirty feasibility test, but it worked, and you don't really want to be looking down at a phone and trying to stab the right position when you're cycling along. You really want to be keeping your eyes on the road and feel there. Button on the left, that's left. Button on the right, that's right. The one next to that is brakes and the one next to that is off. Easy. You can feel that with your four fingers rather than looking down and <coughs> stabbing, trying to stab the right button on your touch screen which may or may not need activating first. It's 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 not ideal. It worked, but it's not ideal. Ideal is a little button board. So on day two I set about rigging up a second Wemos for the front with a button board on it and a circle for the front lights on. When I press a button it controls what happens to both lights directly on the Wemos on the front one and it sends a signal to the web server at the back one and tells that what to do with its lights. Getting this to work exactly as I wanted it was a little tricky, which is why it took me all day. Currently, as the system is set up, both front and back WEMOS log into the hotspot on my mobile phone, but it should be possible to eliminate that and get one of them to work as the access point. But I do have in mind to have a go at setting up the access point on a Raspberry Pi which will probably do away with the Wemos at the back. I just haven't figured it all out yet. I'm only two days into the project. On day two, I decided to make things much more complicated by adding lights to the front. So I'm using a circle and uh, I've got a, another Wemos D1 Mini with a little screen as well. You've got a little OLED screen there which actually is quite useful. It tells me what button's been pressed so I don't have to wonder whether I've pressed the buttons properly or not. And I've also got this little four button board which I prototyped about four years ago and hasn't made it as a product but they are pretty useful. So I'm using that for button control to control both the front and the rear as an alternative to the web interface that I built the day before. So let's fire that up and see how well it works. So it should default to headlights fairly dim once it starts up. Okay, so I don't know, you probably can't see that, but on the little screen it says tail. So that's showing that the tail lights are lit on the back. And so let's do left indicator. So we're hoping that the lights on that side should show. And let's bring the back half into the shot as well. And you should see that they're alternating. And it's happening ten times. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but they're actually yellow. Oh, it's finished the sequence of ten now. If we now press the right button, we should get right indicators, which would be this one and this one. And they're alternating because of the way the HTTP commands work. I couldn't get them to work ab absolutely simultaneously, which is a bit of a drag, but never mind. If I used a Pi, I could probably make that work the way I wanted to. So as soon as the indicators have flashed 10 times, then it defaults back to normal lights. If you actually think, do you know what, I'm wasting my battery, I don't need these lights on, you can turn them off. Then next time you do an indication, they will default to back on again afterwards. And the little screen tells you which button was most recently pressed. And once the indicators are finished, yes, it switches back to tail to tell you that it's in tail lights mode. And I should also note that because the front WEMOS is sending exactly the same commands that this interface was, that I can still control the rear using the web interface. So let's put the tail lights on. Let's turn them off. Brake lights on. Turn right. But it will only be a single 
turn right sequence because I had to change that so that the front and back wear mosses could work in alternating mode. So here it is, complete with lots and lots of cable ties. The back one's already on, and the phone hotspot is in the saddlebag as well. So let's see how it works. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.